Well, hey guys, I hope your week is going well. I have a lot of empties. I typically do an empties video seasonally, and I thought what I would like to do is to split my empties videos into two videos, uh, one just on sunscreen and one on all of the rest of the skincare. So I have a lot of sunscreen that I've gone through and I'm excited to show you all what I actually finished off. I review a lot of sunscreens for you guys and you're always curious how much I go through and that sort of thing. Uh, for the record, as of the filming of today's video, everything that I have finished up and I'm showing you here is everything that I've used in the past three months. So I went through this in three months. Um, so it's been about that long, just at least as of the filming of this video, since my last empties video where I showed you guys all the other sunscreens that I used up. Um, I wear sunscreen daily and I apply sunscreen at minimum three times a day. Um, while I don't make a lot of time to spend a lot of time outdoors recreationally, I do enjoy walking outdoors. I like to take walks outside and I'm also in the car and, you know, walking through parking lots. So I do, I am, you know, out and about a fair amount. So I like to reapply sunscreen very frequently and I would say in the past several months since my last empties video, what with daylight savings time, I'm probably applying it even more frequently than in the last empties video. I like to put it on, for example, before I go into the gym uh, because there are windows in my gym and now that it's daylight when I go to the gym as opposed to in the winter time, I find that I definitely want to reapply in advance. So I'm gonna go through everything. First sunscreen, which I reviewed for you guys and have really just fallen in love with, uh, is the Dermatology Broad Spectrum SPF 45 Anti-Aging Sunscreen. This is cruelty-free and it is uh, really nice. It's got niacinamide in it, which some of you are sensitive to, uh, but it can be helpful for redness. And I just really love the way this feels and looks on the skin. It feels like a cool drink of water. It's SPF 45 and it's very moisturizing. It's not greasy whatsoever. In terms of the type of sunscreen that it is, it's a combination sunscreen, which means it has both mineral and chemical active ingredients. It has zinc oxide and it has octinoxate. Octinoxate will protect against UVB and the zinc oxide will protect against UVB and UVA1 and UVA2. It's only like 20 bucks and I think it's great. I actually prefer it to Elta MD UV Clear. And uh, so it's a wonderful everyday broad spectrum SPF moisturizer. Um, so I've gone through two of those. I also finished up, uh, you'll recall I purchased this La Roche-Posay Anthelos Daily Antioxidant Serum with Sunscreen. This is La Roche-Posay uh, in the US, all right? So I'll, I have uh, another La Roche-Posay sunscreen here that is not from the US, but this one is, uh, it's a chemical sunscreen I have more confidence in chemical sunscreens from either La Roche-Posay or Neutrogena. And the reason for this is they have put a lot of R&D into making efforts to stabilize avobenzone. Avobenzone is the chemical sunscreen ingredient that protects us against UVA, the rays that don't burn our skin, but do penetrate deeply, destroy collagen, suppress the immune system, age and rage us. Uh, so, in the States, we only have in our chemical sunscreens, avobenzone to protect us against that, and it's not super stable. So personally, I have more confidence in La Roche-Posay and L'Oreal, I should say, uh, and Neutrogena than, um, than in maybe other chemical sunscreens where I'm just not as confident about that technology uh, that they put in as far as their R&D. Yes, I know that these companies are not cruelty-free, uh, but I think they do offer a really fantastic product in terms of a chemical sunscreen. And the reason this is important is that chemical sunscreens uh, don't tend to leave a cast, a white cast. So they're more friendly to people with darker skin types than mineral sunscreens. And so anyways, all that rambling aside, I don't recommend their uh, Anthelos uh, Daily Antioxidant Serum with sunscreen. It's very expensive, and I really don't think that it is necessarily any better than some of their other broad spectrum chemical sunscreens. Uh, the antioxidant thing in this, you know, antioxidants in topical products, 
The idea behind them is that they will help scavenge free radicals and help to combat some of the damage that occurs from UV exposure. But there are actual studies showing that antioxidants and sunscreens in particular, their ability to scavenge free radicals is pretty much nil. And the way sunscreens are formulated, they're formulated to form this barrier that actually keeps the antioxidants out. So in other words, I don't recommend, this one's pretty expensive. I don't think it's worth it. I think a better choice is the, in the US market is the La Roche-Posay Anthelos SPF 60 Ultra Light. Very friendly for oily prone skin. Great, I would imagine, under makeup. I don't wear makeup, so always take that with a grain of salt when I say it. But it does have a matte finish that I think is compatible with makeup application after it has been applied and dried. Um, but anyways, speaking of La Roche-Posay, um, this is now not in the US market, but um, a viewer sent this to me. This is the La Roche-Posay Shaka Fluid uh, that is available in Europe and UK. I really enjoyed this and finished it up. This is their newer formulation of their um, chemical sunscreen with really good broad spectrum filters in it uh, that we don't have in our chemical sunscreens here in the States. It is water resistant. A note about this though, be very careful if you purchase it to look for on the bottle it says sans parfum or non-perfumed. That's the fragrance free one. They also make uh, a fragrance containing one and the differences are not super apparent on the bottle because they put it in tiny print uh, at the bottom here, non-perfume. So look for that. They also make a tinted one that has fragrance in it, but I finished up the non-tinted, non-fragrance free one really fantastic sunscreen matte finish very nice very elegant um also from the uh european market you can also get this in mexico i finished up the Eucerin sun allergy protect i found that i use this a fair amount uh for my body in particular and uh and going to the gym this is a uh, very good for sensitive skin people who have sun allergy uh, like polymorphous light eruption for example I have a video on that by the way if that's you uh, this offers very good broad spectrum coverage and I actually really enjoyed this uh, it is pretty shiny um, so do know that I don't think the aesthetics of this are any better or any different than the um, than the Altruist SPF. So um, I might prefer to continue to use the Altruist. It's a lot more affordable. Um, and so, you know, I like this one, but it's not my favorite, but it was pretty good and I think it's effective. I also really enjoyed and finished up, where is it? The um, the other two Eustrin sunscreens that I had um, and talked about before, the Sensitive Protect and a Sun Cream and the Sensitive protect sun mattifying fluid. The mattifying fluid was like it implies more matte than the cream. Uh, so I think for makeup purposes, you may find this works better for you. But personally, I didn't find that they looked any different on my skin. You'll recall when I tried this one out, it did this weird pilling thing and just peeled up off of my skin. I think that had to do with either a moisturizer that I had used previously, I'm not sure, but it never did that sense and I actually really enjoyed this um, and thought it was nice. No cast with these, they are pretty shiny. Even the matte one uh, kind of gives a shininess to it, but wonderful for sensitive skin. I really enjoyed those. And then another chemical sunscreen that I finished up is the Uriage Berry Sun, fragrance-free, very high protection light -like texture. This is wonderful. I strongly recommend this to those of you. Uh, it comes from France uh, and again, those wonderful broad spectrum filters, no cast on this, very comfortable to wear and excellent for sensitive skin. All right, you guys see me apply this. I, I've used this, uh, I pretty much use this exclusively on Sundays. This is a can make. Uh, mermaid skin gel UV. I say that because I, you know, kind of leave it um, by the door and tend to grab it on Sundays. Uh, this is great. You can get this on Yes Style. It is a Japanese chemical sunscreen. Really nice aesthetics. No cast um, and is not uh, greasy. And I really enjoyed it and would repurchase it and recommend it. It says for face and body, but this is such a tiny tube. That is a real shortcoming of a lot of the. Japanese sunscreens is that they come in these tiny little tubes, but you know, in terms of the claim for body, you really should be protecting your skin as well with sun protective clothing. So, you know, don't rely exclusively on sunscreen. So if you protect your skin from the sun using other measures like clothing, you may be able to get away with just this. 
In other words, you're putting it on your hands and maybe your neck and upper chest. And then I finished up the Beet Shield. I love this. Crave Beauty's uh, uh, Antioxidant Day Fluid. So if you didn't watch my Crave Beauty video, they have a uh, sunscreen in, that's sold in Korea. It has a wonderful broad spectrum, um, SPF 50, I believe. Uh, but they can't sell that product in the States as a sunscreen. So they renamed it to the Beet Shield. The reason they can't sell it as a sunscreen is that the ingredients uh, are not approved for use in sunscreen here. It doesn't mean they're banned, it just means that they can't be included in products claiming to protect you from a burn. Uh, just part of the FDA hoopla. So, uh, But I really love this. It's great for it's a nice matte finish. It's not drying whatsoever. If you're interested in more, check out that video. I talk more in detail about it there. Because I fell in love with the Dermatology sunscreen, I actually didn't really use Elta MD that much. I did finish up Elta MD UV Pure. This is one of my favorite Elta MD sunscreens. It's a mineral only sunscreen and it's got a pretty respectable cast to it. I prefer this one actually to the newer UV Replenish. I think the cast is a hint better than the UV Replenish and I think it's a better value. So this is water resistant up to 80 minutes and wonderful for sensitive skin. I definitely recommend this for anybody with uh, sensitive skin who wants a good mineral sunscreen. It is fantastic. LTMD, I want to say it's technically cruelty free. They do not test on animals or contract with parties that do. And they don't sell in China. So, you know, as far as I know, although I'm not an expert on the cruelty free thing, that constitutes cruelty free. But one who is definitely cruelty free uh, is Jack Black. And the Jack Black Oil Free Sun Guard, I strongly recommend. It is identical almost to the Elta MD UV Sport. Really like this a lot. And I finished that one up. It's SPF 45 water resistant, very good for oily skin, no greasiness, shininess. I, I feel as though the uh, Jack Black is a little better than Elta MD UV Sport as far as the shininess. UV Sport can be pretty shiny. Um, okay, one that I finished up and really enjoyed as well is the MD Solar Science uh, SPF 50 Mineral Cream, Broad Spectrum SPF 50. I love this. It's great. As far as a cast, it is respectable. So this is going to be uh, nano-sized um, mineral active zinc titanium. Uh, it's water resistant. Really good for oily prone skin. Really good for oily prone skin. Looking for a water resistant, fragrance free sunscreen. I definitely recommend that one. All right, and then some lower SPFs that I finished up as moisturizers. The SPF 30 Olay Sensitive. Love this. Uh, I go through it pretty fast, though. I would say I go through this in a. I can go through this in a couple of weeks just with once daily application. Like I don't carry this with me or reapply it. I will put it on though first thing in the morning. It's great, very comfortable, not greasy, wonderful for sensitive skin, uh, but I go through it really fast and I imagine you all probably do too as well. I wish Olay would come out with more, more sunscreens like that one. They have a ton of products, uh, but a lot of their sunscreens have fragrance in them or just, I don't know, the aesthetics of some of them I've tried have not been that great for the price point. Uh, but that one remains affordable, uh, and you know I definitely recommend it over the over the ones in the tub. The tub ones are just really expensive. And then as far as kind of tints go, I did finish up my favorite uh, Color Science Total Eye Three in One Renewal. This is SPF 35. I just use this, you guys, under my eye area, kind of more for cosmesis. <laughs> uh, it brightens up the um, under eye area really nicely for me. And camouflages a um, blue, kind of bluish veins around my eyes. And it's a mineral sunscreen that uh, just gives a little bit of added protection around the eye. Definitely not necessary, but to answer your question, no, I have not found a more affordable dupe for this. But it's not an essential, it's just something I like using and continue to repurchase myself. I'm currently using a new one, um, or newer one than that. That one's obviously empty. Uh, speaking of, currently I am using the Color Science uh, Mineral Shield, which I really love, but I also finished up and love the Exuviant Sheer Daily Protector SPF 50. It took me a while to go through this. I only apply tinted sunscreen in the morning. I don't reapply that one throughout the day. But this is really nice. It has green tea extract in it, EGCG, so, an, you know, an antioxidant. I told you the limitations of antioxidants in sunscreens, but EGCG and green tea extract 
They um, have also been shown to be helpful for oiliness and diminishing the appearance of the pores. Um, but this has a really nice aesthetic to it. I like tinted sunscreens because I like to use, make use of the iron oxides for added visible light protection. Iron oxides are an ingredient in the inactive list that uh, can protect against visible light. Iron oxides can protect against that as can uh, zinc, zinc and titanium dioxide. So mineral sunscreens with iron oxides are really good for people who have hyperpigmentation, melasma, because that is driven not only by UV, but also by visible light in the broader wavelengths. And these ingredients will, will help to protect against that and get you some better improvement in the hyperpigmentation. So those are the pigmented sunscreens. Oh, I also finished up uh, really quickly. I mean, I buzzed through this pretty fast. The Polish Choice, uh, this is a mineral sunscreen, the Essential Glow Moisturizer SPF 30. This is very dewy, <laughs> but I liked it. I just went through it really quickly. Um, but it is fragrance free. Um, check out my review of this if you want more details. But I thought it was good and didn't have any issue with it and finished it up. So those are all of the sunscreens for the face body. Like I said, I don't really use, I use a lot of sun protective clothing. Like I wear, um, you know, I always wear sleeves, gloves, a hat. So I wear a lot of sun protective clothing. I would say the sunscreen that I use to my body the most would be the Eucerin Sun Protect Allergy. Um, so some of these though I would put on my body uh, just because I have a lot of sunscreens and I kind of want to use some of them up uh, and move on to the next so that I don't have too many that end up expiring and going to waste. So I do end up using a lot of them on my body when, you know, that's probably not the most cost effective thing to pursue. Uh, oh, but I also would use the Jack Black on my body a fair amount as well. Okay, but um, last but not least, I also put, I also have a separate lip SPF, you should too. Uh, lip SPF is just easier to hack on the lips. Uh, sunscreens, if you just put your sunscreen on your lips, it can be very drying, very irritating, and it doesn't always stay very well. So those formulated for the lips are nice and you kind of need to reapply them a lot more frequently than, than your, your face because you're licking your lips, moisture or whatnot, that it just doesn't stay on as, as much as, as, as regular skin. Uh, that being said, I'm not the best at reapplying the lip SPF, so I don't go through them as frequently as I should. Um, but I finished up, this is a favorite of mine, the Vanny Cream Mineral uh, Lip Protection SPF 30, water resistant, this is mineral only. It does leave a little pinky white cast uh, that I kind of like, and many of you have commented that you like it too. Fragrance free, uh, pretty affordable, so I, I recommend that. That's like my favorite lip SPF. And I also like Elta MB's UV Lip Balm Broad Spectrum SPF 31. This is a combination sunscreen. So it has um, zinc and it also has octinoxate in it. Uh, so if you're sensitive to chemical ingredients, particularly around the lips, this may be a little irritating to you. But I, found that I find this has a nice aesthetic to it. It's SPF 31, water resistant. This has no cast. Uh, but one thing I don't like about Elta MD's uh, UV lip balm, I don't like the packaging uh, because the tube is short and it's kind of squat. And I find that it just makes it hard to get the product out in the beginning and in the end, uh, and it doesn't shake up well. So there's a little bit of separation. I don't know if you guys have ever used this and experienced that, but there's a little bit of separation, which I don't like because I don't want the, to squeeze this and see just clear the clear oil part come out where it's separated, uh, even when shaking. So it doesn't shake up well. So I don't like that about it, and that's, that's something that, having used it so many times, I found uh, stands out to me about this one, but it's not bad. Otherwise, uh, just make sure you get a good consistent consistency coming out, and you know that kind of results in wasting a lot of it. So, not ideal, but yeah, that's everything that I used up in the past three months as of the filming of this video. So it took me three months to go through. I'm just gonna tally up the uh, non-tinted, uh, non-lip SPFs here. We've got one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You guys, I can count. Okay. 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15. Uh, 15 sunscreens that I went up in, went up that I used up in three months. So that's about five a month. Um, but like I said, longer daylight hours, more reapplication. And I've been really, really conscientious of reapplying consistently. As it gets hotter too, I tend to want to have more of my skin exposed. I don't want to, you know, cover myself as much. So I use more on my body. So these past few months, I've gone through much more than I do in the winter months where I'm all, you know, mostly indoors because it's cold and unpleasant and, you know, there's not as much sun. I will do a separate video. I'm not sure when it'll go up on uh, all the other stuff that I used up in, in the spring, in the past kind of three months since the filming of my last empties video. But I think splitting them up into two was a good idea because as you can see, I just went through a lot more this past, this past uh, season. <laughs> and so I think splitting them up would just be easier for you all to digest. So stay tuned for the rest of the stuff that I finished up in another video. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the empties. Comment below what sunscreen you have finished up and keep re reusing and, and reapplying and you, you've grown to love and use up. Um, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.